I don't hide the hard stuff ever, but I do include hope. And for me, that hope was in my faith in Christ. So all of these pieces are through that lens a little bit. Um, and on that note, this next one is called King and Me. It is about kind of being, what, what it feels like to be a Christian, suffering with anxiety, depression, mental health issues, even self-harm. Um, so a little warning there, this one mentions it. Um, but I wrote it to kind of challenge, it's, it's gonna sound like I'm kind of like mad at the church in general, I'm not, it's this one like focused group because there's a whole lot of things that are misunderstood but like a rude, apathetic, you know, church hurt can really do some damage. And I wrote it to kind of just address that a little bit. So this one is called King and Me. You, you insisted. You twisted me like a jealous lover. You turned me against myself and against others. You have even deceived me, leading me into calling the spirit a liar. I smothered his fire as I suffered. In a split second of deadly desire, many times I could have taken my life. But my breath hadn't yet expired. Down to the wire, the truth is, I kept fighting for myself, by myself, and I got too tired. By the time I can't feel the difference between a smile or a frown, that's about the same time they say to calm down. That's about the timing when they say I'm tiring. Oh, I'm so sorry. Why don't you go like that? With no grace period, no pause button, gravity is pressing play, pressuring me into depression, my hope decaying like a cavity displaying a picture of a mind in captivity. It's so intense when I'm in full defense. Anyone watching this, it's like a lunar eclipse. The moon can make me a lunatic, but the nervous tick is the clock. I wish I could rewind and get back the time I missed. Now wasted in the mist of the early morning, in the midst of mourning the dreams I lost. If only I could get the night back, I'd sleep. But now it's Sunday, and I'm hiding my wrist and wearing long sleeves in the sanctuary. Blame it on the air conditioning, the traditional distancing. Yeah, it's cold, but the bitterness isn't coming from the temperature. It's not coming from the sepulcher or anything secular. It's from the body of Christ that's gone icy. Compassion marked up. I guess it's too pricey. When death on a cross is the cost, yeah, I bet death to yourself doesn't look too enticing. You can rebuke me for gambling. Meanwhile, you're rambling how you want to be used by the Almighty. Just look to your side. You're ignoring the abused, condemning those who, to you, their life is just a lesson in your gossip session that you'll properly disguise by calling it prayer intercession just to stay in a churchy loop. Simultaneously, your brother or sister could have missed the meeting, missed the message because they're busy taking a beating and learning how to tie their own loop, drawing their own lines silent. A fatal smile that hides your hurting friend. Or that person you wave to every weekend as you rush out to play and go home. You don't even notice they're at the end of their rope. You're not even aware how severely they need a manifestation of hope because you're too busy looking in the mirror, mirror, who has the most, whatever. whatever. However, some people only appear happy as ever in their Instagram posts. You wouldn't mock the broken leg that wears a cast. But you'll lock up and block out the broken mind that wears a mask. The stigma is a killer. Those who already live in fear and in the false safety of their darkness are afraid to come to the light because they'll take the blame. And shame instigates a fight because other people are afraid of unfamiliar darkness. Afraid of things like invisible illness. Afraid only because they can't possibly understand how fill in the blank. So they judge from a safe distance in Jesus' name, with this false pretense that Christians aren't allowed to hurt or be weak, or else they're just not strong enough in their beliefs. That brings me to my knees. Lord, show them, please, the truth is that we have an empathetic high priest, one who cares about our every need. If you truly believe salvation looks like perfection on earth, then religion is the culprit, and my friends, you've been brainwashed by robots in the pulpits. Brave enough to finally ask for help. 
I'm glamorizing it? Really? This is just how I'm feeling. Tell me then, are they romanticizing divorce when couples seek healing? Another popular response that holds your hands locked is they might think you're throwing yourself a pity party. It doesn't even work that way. If I wanted you to feel bad for me, I wouldn't pretend to be strong and say I'm okay every single day. What I fight with doesn't even let me walk into the kitchen without feeling in the way I don't want your attention, trust me. Sometimes I just need you to pray. But instead of allowing me to pray and receive thoroughly, this thing starts preying on my insecurities. Suddenly scared to ask for prayer because needing help is embarrassing. The second I get comfortable, it loves to remind me of people in quote ministry. I've heard confirming and sharing how people asking them for prayer has in itself become the annoying burdens they're bearing. But I'm sure it's just me. My fault for misunderstanding. Words clearly spoken. Call me uncertain and pull the curtain on this performance. I'm so sorry I'm still learning. It's just my heart is killing me, aching. My heart is burning and breaking for those who fight alone because I know it's terrifying and I know there's so many. And sometimes I think maybe if I just shut my mouth, my mind won't show its broken colors. But the enemy can only steal my voice if I make the choice to leave the doors unlocked and stay smothering under the covers. I don't want to be entangled in sin. I don't want my words mangled within me till when they finally come out. It sounds like rage rising like melanin in the summer sun, but it won't kiss your skin. It'll damage and poison the soul that swims within, burning you deeply till the third degree hits the dry bones, confirming whether or not you truly agree with what you believe. And this enemy will continue to have victory just as smoke rises, as it chokes out in crisis and criticizes until the church recognizes that despite the same God, we don't all wear the same sizes. And honestly, I've often wanted to escape this person that looks back at me. This person reflecting pain that's all internal. A life without it, I don't know. But I'm starting to as the healing begins to show. If I ever have a glow on my face, it's only the presence of God who has drenched me with grace. I can die to myself without losing my life, for I have been crucified with Christ. Almost ironically, like an upside down spiritual suicide, where only your pain dies, but you are new. Your past is deceased. You're reborn into peace. Self-defense is a weapon I no longer need. I vow to surrender. My Redeemer fights for me so I can just breathe. I'm not afraid of the dark. The dark bows to the King in me.